Welcome to Ginger the Plane. This is the story I've been trying to tell you for the last six months. This is the story of the instrument panel update in our 1973 Cessna 172M. Ginger, as we call her, came to us in the fall of 2020. Ginger had always been very well maintained. She lived in a hangar, she had low airframe and low engine hours, great interior, fantastic paint. The only thing really letting Ginger down was a dated vintage instrument panel. She had one comm radio, no ADSB out, and her transponder worked half the time. So clearly Ginger needed some updates. Were we gonna do a few updates or were we gonna go for it? That's this story. I hope you'll follow along. So why did I choose Ginger? Why did I upgrade her instrument panel? I had searched for many years for an airplane to buy. The two qualities I most wished for was an original, unmolested panel and an airplane that had obviously been loved by the previous owners. Ginger had a simple panel that I could upgrade and she clearly showed great pride of ownership. Things that are harder and harder to find in an aging general aviation fleet. She was, and may still be, a unicorn. As good as the original instrument panel was, there were still some missing details like ADSB out and a second comm radio. I had been looking at panels for years and knew what I liked and what I would want if I was to ever do an upgrade. More on that later. I started pricing a basic update to include ADSB out, a well-used GPS comm, and maybe, if the budget allowed, a simple autopilot. I searched through the various online ad sources, Facebook groups, Cessna forums, everywhere I could think of for discount avionics, and found lots of used bargains of uncertain operational status. You really just didn't know what was out there, honestly. I also started to learn that labor and installation by a well-qualified AMPIA would be costly. My basic upgrade was quickly on its way to costing fifteen to eighteen thousand dollars just in parts, and that was for old used gear at that, plus another ten thousand in labor. Ouch. I realized at this point that doing a piecemeal update was not cost effective. By the time I had the panel I wanted, I would probably be spending a lot more than if I took this simple original panel from the 1970s to a completely modern, full glass panel. Some back of the napkin analysis proved my hypothesis and that was the moment I decided Ginger's panel would be 100% new. There are lots of things to consider when deciding to upgrade an instrument panel. Most obvious is what's your budget and what kind of avionics do you want? Selecting a brand can also be very important. It's, it's almost like choosing a religion, but more on that later. Also, are there any avionics installers located nearby or are you going to have to travel to a shop? And which shop and how do you choose? Most importantly, do you know why you want to upgrade your instrument panel? These are some of the basic questions you have to ask and answer before you get started. They say the four most expensive words in aviation are while we're in there. Emission creep is a very common problem for your budget if a clear set of needs, wants, and must-haves isn't mapped out in advance. As I mentioned earlier, I had a very clear idea of what I wanted, but this had come from studying what others had done and listening to what they liked and what they wished they had done differently in their own projects. A lot of hard-earned lessons, a lot of money spent. I was determined to learn from that. What would I be doing with this added capability? Ginger needed ADSB out. The Pacific Northwest where we live has a lot of open spaces and you could fly without it. But where we're based north of Seattle, it was an absolute must-have due to the need to pass through the Class Bravo airspace. 
I was pretty much confined otherwise to lying in a small area with Canada to the north, the mountains to the east, and the SeaTac Bravo to the south. If all I wanted was a $100 hamburger every once in a while, perfect. But I had hoped to go to Oregon, California, maybe cross the Cascades, and someday to Rockies and go to Oshkosh. So ADSB had to have it. Safety is another big concern. We fly over the ocean and some pretty high mountains here. We wanted to add a 406 ELT as well. And I'm not an instrument rated pilot. 30 years of flying, I've really not had the need for one, but I did want Ginger to be capable of having an IFR upgrade in the future with maybe one or two additional upgrades. That way, if I ever decided that I'd like to get an IFR rating, it'd be a simple additional couple of upgrades to make her that way. And most especially, we needed a capable autopilot with GPS steering and a level button. Engine monitoring in the original panel consisted of a single exhaust gas temperature probe, an ammeter gauge, and a low voltage warning light. That's it. And yeah, Ginger had flown for 47 years with these simple tools and did just fine. And I've had a lot of trolls tell me that I was an idiot for wanting a full suite of engine monitoring displays and a Cessna 172. Eh, to each his own. I know what I wanted it for. You know, it makes me feel safer and I like knowing what's happening with my engine. So, as long as I'm good with it, that's all that matters. Okay, so at this point you've decided how much you can spend and your spouse is in agreement. You know what you want, you know why you want to upgrade, and how you plan to use your new gear. The next logical decision is to find a shop, right? No. I suggest you decide which brand you want first and then find an experienced shop that specializes in this brand. Why brand first? Have you ever tried to buy a Ford at a Chevy dealership? Can't happen, right? Most shops have a brand preference, and they may be dealers or distributors in that brand as well. They may be willing to install some other brands, but mm, not really. It's kind of a waste of time, and it may end up costing you a lot of money as a result of the compromises that you're going to have to put into your panel upgrade. Don't do this. Choose your brand preference wisely, and then find a shop to do the work. The Dynon Skyview HDX system for certified aircraft was my choice for many reasons not the least of which was they're located in the Seattle area and I like supporting local businesses. But really what set Dynon apart for me was the quality of their system, how well integrated it was, and its willingness to play nice with other brands of equipment. Also, I love that the monthly database upgrades are free. I mean, <laughs> Paying a subscription for software updates? Really? Remember when I said choosing a brand was like picking a religion? Well, let's just say I've had a few people criticize my brand choice. They ask, why didn't you choose brand G? It's the best, you know? Well, I'll avoid disparaging the other brand and simply say that for me, Dynon was the best choice. It offers all the capability I could ever want or need, and it does it at an affordable price with great service and support. So in summary, pick your brand first and then your shop. You'll be happy you did it this way. I spoke with Dynon, and they provided me with the names of a few local shops, and I also checked out a few national shops. I was very fortunate to have sound maintenance nearby and Dean Riley and his team of skilled AMPs, they did a masterful job of installing our Skyview HDX system. I've been incredibly happy flying behind this panel, and I have Dean and his team to thank for that.
Thanks, guys. Have you ever heard the expression, you can't make an omelet without breaking a few eggs? Well, a panel upgrade is going to look pretty horrible before it looks better. I thought I was prepared for this, and the deconstruction of our original panel went about as expected. But, man, it honestly took my breath away a few times. I knew it would all be okay in the end and that this was just part of the process, but if you're going to do a panel upgrade, prepare yourself. Lots of 50-year-old wiring came out with the original panel's instruments, radio, transponder, etc. The previous work was evident in some dodgy looking splices, but not, nothing dangerous, just not something I'd want to be worrying about when flying out over the ocean waters or above some mountains. So, new wiring fuses and a vernier style mixture cable were added to the list of items in the upgrade. Having a good idea of what you want in the panel and how you plan to use it is important. This is where you discuss the design of the panel and the layout. I provided a very clear drawing of where I wanted everything to be, and I had learned a lot at looking at other panels and knew where every last switch should be and in what order. I also had a really good idea of the markings and the finish that I was hoping to have on the panel. Things will inevitably come up that you couldn't plan for or didn't realize would be an issue. For example, a sub-panel brace that happens to be exactly where you want to place the USB charging port, or placing the second comm radio too close to the throttle and mixture controls, and having to find a different radio that's a little slimmer, that lifts it up a little bit, gets it out of the way. These are the little details that matter. Get them right and you'll be happy. The job is done, your airplane is all put back together, and all systems are working as intended. So you pay the bill and you fly away and you live happily ever after. Well, kind of, but not really. All good installation shops will tell you that they're is some flight testing that you'll need to do and you'll have to dial in some systems to make sure everything is working happily. That's to be expected. And Ginger flew great and uh, we only had a couple of very minor squawks. So what's it like to fly behind this brand new instrument panel you ask? In one word, amazing. I've flown for 30 years behind round instruments. I've always considered myself to be a bit of an analog guy, and the closest I had ever gotten to flying glass was using ForeFlight on my iPad. Yeah, the Dynon Skyview display can be set up to show a six pack of gauges, uh, so if that helps you with your transition from steam gauges to glass, then all the power to you. But for me personally, I wanted to rip the band-aid off and I wanted to get started in that transition as quickly as possible. And I gotta be honest with you, before I even made it from the startup location to the end of the taxiway, I was already starting to feel pretty comfortable. And after takeoff and climb out, I was noticing how much more I was actually looking outside the cockpit and less time inside. And the reason for that was all the information I needed was right in front of me in one location. I didn't have to look to the right. I didn't have to look to the left. I didn't have to look down. I didn't have to go over here or there. Everything was in one spot and very quick and easily read. And I find even now today that I do a lot more of my flying outside the cockpit than I ever had before. In the five months and more than 50 hours of flying I've done in Ginger, sitting behind this amazing new panel, I've come to appreciate all of the added capability that the Dynon Skyview HDX system has to offer. In addition to ADS-B out and a second comm radio, Skyview adds a GPS WAS and a two-axis autopilot and an engine management system. There's so much more situational awareness and it really adds to your confidence and helps you to easily accomplish any flight with ease. My passengers, they also see modern gear and the old bird 
and they feel comfortable knowing that there's some pride of ownership in Ginger. Okay, if you're still watching this video at this point, you're definitely looking to do an instrument panel upgrade, and you really only have at this point one more question, and that is, how much? How much did this cost? The simple answer is, I paid in the low 30s, but your costs will definitely vary, and here's why. The work on Ginger was done in early 2021. Depending on when you watch this video, could be a few months later, could be a few years later, and inflation's going to make the prices change. So that's going to be different. Also, depending on which brand you buy and the items you add, like an avionics panel, a GPS navcom, weather radar if you're a high and fast flyer, all of those things could lead to a higher cost. And the other side of it is if you reuse a lot of what you already have in the plane and maybe only add a glass panel, maybe sell some of your older gear, your costs could actually be lower. So it's very individual, specific to your airplane and what your wants and desires are for your upgrade. Uh, shop around, definitely have a budget, and uh, you know, know the why before you try to upgrade your panel. If you do decide to go with a Dynon Skyview, they have a really great cost configurator tool at their website. I'd recommend that you start there. I did that. It gave me a really, really good idea of what the parts would cost for this upgrade. And it really helped my budget. Also, you can gather a lot of cost info by going onto the various online retailer websites and shopping for things like the avionics panel, the GPS navcom, uh, push to talk switches, CO monitors, all that stuff is there and it'll give you a really good idea of what the cost for those parts will be. Start with setting a budget, pick your brand, find an experienced shop that specializes in your brand and know what you want the upgrades to do and how you're going to want to use them. Do all that and you should have a pretty good outcome and be very, very happy. Thanks for watching this video. If you found it helpful and liked what you saw, please consider subscribing. Like the video and leave a comment. And I hope it inspires you to do your own panel upgrade and feel confident in your choices. Best of luck everybody, I'll see you out there.